Good afternoon. Um, for the last three years or so, Hope College has been uh, involved with World Hope International in a, uh, in a uh, research effort in Sierra Leone that has led to a rather interesting development project that we call the Mango Outreach Project. Uh, it was in May of 2009 when I first took a group of Hope students to Sierra, to Sierra Leone uh, for a three-week research uh, trip. Uh, that was facilitated by World Hope. Uh, and one of, one of the principal reasons that we uh, chose to work in Sierra Leone was World Hope's extensive involvement in that country and the access uh, that we enjoyed in that country because of World Hope's work there. Um, and, and so that, 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 first, uh, that first research trip, um, uh, what we did was basically interview what I call the vertical slice of Sierra Leone society, from central government officials to village leaders. Uh, and we worked our way uh, from the central government down to the village. And when we got to the village, we found very, very interesting things going on. And so when we went back the next year, we focused exclusively on the village level. And uh, Eli Knapp at that time was uh, uh, a colleague in that, uh, in that research effort. Um, along about the same time, uh, World Hope was inaugurating a, um, uh, an effort in Sierra Leone known as First Step, which is the establishment of an export processing zone uh, in that country. And they were lining up their first client, who turned out to be a fruit juice concentrate maker. And the question that was put to us was, well, did we think, uh, based on our work in the villages, that it would be possible uh, to find a way efficiently to access the uh, uh, abundant mangoes that grow in that country uh, and supply uh, mangoes then to this, uh, to this maker, fruit juice concentrate. We thought that the answer would be yes, but uh, we, uh, three of our students then extended for another two weeks uh, to conduct a study specifically on that question, and we came up with a project design which both uh, World Hope and Africa Felix Juice, the uh, fruit juice company, uh, liked very much. And uh, this uh, gentleman standing behind me then, the following year, uh, ended up as the project coordinator for that project on the ground. This is Steve Greta, recent uh, graduate of Hogan College, and I'm going to turn the rest of this presentation over to him. Well, Thank you very much, Ron, and thank you very much, Eastern University, uh, for hosting this Transformational Development Summit. We are uh, certainly excited uh, as representatives of both uh, Hogan College um, and uh, World Hope to be speaking at, at uh, you know, this, this summit. And we would like to run through a couple of pictures for you guys really quickly to give you a visual uh, display of the kind of work that, that we were involved in. So, as Ron mentioned, as Dr. Oberson mentioned, I'm sorry, when you study in the field together, professors that <laughs> would really like to be on a first name basis, so Ron may slip out a couple of times. The first thing that, that, that uh, Dr. Oberson mentioned that I would like to, to, to reemphasize is that the, uh, the research that we did in preparation for this event was, uh, was, was a cumulative, cumulative for research <clears throat> approach, which is to say that we, we actually had a foundation of information about Sierra Leone, given the research that we've done in, in decentralization and village institutional arrangements, that allowed us to, to expand once the problem of could a supply chain be arranged uh, came onto the picture. And we did so by collecting as much information as we could from multiple stakeholders uh, who we believed would then be involved in the supply chain. Um, so it's not a sort of desk operation, it was very much a field operation, learning from the people who would be involved as to how they think it should be done. Um, sort of similar to a participatory approach um, that you may hear described in, in World Vision circles and those kind of things. In, in this picture you see a number of different interviews, um, and Dr. Oberson also mentioned the access in particular that World Hope contributed and, and provided for this research the picture in the, the bottom right hand corner of the screen is of Paul and I sitting with the, the president's mother, the, the president of Sierra Leone, um, Mami, Mami Kuruma, as they call her. Um, very close connection between government leaders uh, allowed us to have a lot of access and to move freely throughout the country. 
Our research uh, included interviews at the village level with farmers, uh, with village leaders, uh, with regional leaders, government officials, uh, development personnel. And the conclusion ended up being, you know what, this is actually possible. There is a company that wants to make fruit concentrate. There are various farmers who are fairly unorganized but have a ton of mangoes. Can we link the two? And, and, and our, our real goal in terms of development, or, or one of our key values was, can we link the two in such a way that the most amount of value goes as directly as possible to the small holder? So, kind of pluck out the middleman, not that they're at the end of the world, but if we can get the value directly to the small holder as possible, then that's a huge benefit. So this is the basic idea. You'll have to forgive my uh, Microsoft Paint rendition of the theory, but you know, on the left hand side we have the small holders. Very simple, they own their own trees, they put their mangoes into crates, they aggregate the supply of mangoes at the village level under a sort of village committee, which we came to term the Makoko, or the Mango Coordinating Committee. Uh, Makoko sort of has a Sierra Leonean local flair that uh, everybody on our team really liked, especially uh, our Sierra Leonean colleagues. Um, and then the mangoes from the village level would be brought to a collection center. Perhaps there are five villages surrounding the collection center. And the Africa Felix juice truck would come and pick up the mangoes at the collection center. So there's sort of this, this streamlined approach. So that was the plan. That was the theory. We actually proposed this to, to World Hope and to uh, Africa Felix, saying, you know what, it would be a good idea for Africa Felix to do it this way. And they looked back at, at Houghton and World Hope and said, well, you know what, why don't you guys, uh, why don't you guys try and set it up? So a team returned to the field, uh, which I was a part of. Or, sorry. First, we designed the project, and the purpose there, or, or again, a key value in the design was the, the relationship, uh, the relationships between the development agency, the business, and the village leaders, or the community leaders. So we wanted to gain access to the, the sort of mango supply via the village or, or the social gatekeepers, as we like to call them, or you know, maybe stakeholders as well. Um, but emphasizing the relational aspect of social development became a key, and I think it was one of the keys uh, to our success. Here you see a contract signing meeting between a village who's signing a contract with the company, and lining the picture are the village headmen, the village leadership, the village elders, uh, sort of supervising and looking over. We wanted to respect them in everything that we did to, to highlight uh, the ownership that they would be taking once our intervention had been uh, removed or, or passed along. Once we had the design, we moved on to coordinating the, the project, actually setting it up. Uh, Paul Christensen, who's with us today, and myself returned to Sierra Leone in January 2001 uh, under the auspices of, of World Hope and working as World Hope staff. We uh, worked in the McKinney office in northern Sierra Leone and began coordinating the project. And it becomes somewhat tricky when you have I think more than 2,000 farmers involved when you have a fruit juice concentrate company who is multifaceted, they have a lot of different components of their business coming together at one time to try and make things work. Um, then you have a third party supply chain champion in, in the role of World Hope and, and our development staff to make all those components work so that the community can benefit, so that the company can benefit, was really tricky. This is a, a good example. In the, in the picture, you see the first collection of mangoes occurring around 11 o'clock at night <laughs> in a village called Mabun Station. And uh, just an interesting note about this village is that they had projected that they would be able to supply, or they had contracted to supply, about 112 crates of mangoes for the entire season. Well, on the first night that the truck came, they supplied 144. <laughs> it was staggering. They, I mean, the mangoes are coming out of the woodworks, and we were, you know, this was really the moment of truth. Is, is this going to work? You know, are the village, are the people really interested in this? Can this, can this work? And it was a, a tremendous confirmation that uh, we, uh, we were very thankful for. Not everything ran smoothly. Uh, there were, sorry, let me get back here. One more picture I wanted to show you guys. The picture on the right is an example of when the collection did not occur as planned. And 
the Eternal, due to some problems in the factory, was unable to, uh, to arrive at this village. And here you see a gentleman's porch full of megas that uh, did not get, get picked up. Um, so the, there you see the CEO of the fruit juice factory right there. Um, looking at the megas, and he actually wrote them a check later on to, uh, to compensate them for their goods. So this also illustrates another role that World Book played, which was a little bit of arbitration between the farmers and the company. Uh, and it was helpful, I think, to have a third party in that role. Uh, a third party that could say to the company, you really need to be responsible to the contract you sign with these farmers, whether or not they have very much leverage on you. And to the farmers, you really need to bring your magnets to the collection center when you said you will, you know, in order to make this whole thing work. It was very heavy on, uh, on coordination in order to make it successful. And we did experience uh, some success. Here's a, here's a picture of the, uh, the gentleman on the left is the director of First Step in Sierra Leone, which is World Hope's uh, for-profit uh, subsidiary that is designed to attract international investment to the country. And next to him is the gentleman who is in charge of the fruit juice factory. And there are Paul and I smiling proudly being surrounded by our families from the villages of country. Very encouraging time for us. Also, during collection, um, <coughs> Dr. Oberson and our other colleague, Wes Dean, who you see here, another Houghton graduate, uh, were able to return, sort of be reunited during, uh, during the, the collection phase to enjoy experiencing uh, this theory being brought into reality, being brought into practice. And it's important to note here, I think, that the theory and the thinking and the intellectual and technical capacity developed in, you know, sort of Houghton's uh, university research academia world was made possible by the connections and by the relationships and by, by the operational capability, the relational, cultural, technical capability that World Hope possessed. So it goes, it, it's, it's very important for the two to work hand in hand. And here was an example where it had worked hand in hand, and it was, it was, a, it was a good experience. Of course, you don't want to do an, an interve or a development intervention without making sure that you're doing what's right. You don't want to cause more problems than you're solving. And so World Hope and Hope and College again participated to do an evaluation of the project. Um, here you see a picture of Dr. Ockerson and a team of students from Houghton who came out for, I think it was a two week uh, period of time, a three, three week uh, period of time to conduct intensive interviews with the communities who were going to be impacted or who were being impacted by the supply chain that we had set up. As partners in development with World, with World Hope, our goal was to promote sus lively, uh, sustainable livelihoods in, in, rural, in rural communities. And we wanted to make sure that that was what we were doing. <laughs> so these undergraduate students came out, conducted, like I said, intensive interviews in 31 villages. and. Found some interesting things. Not everything had gone perfectly, but for those villages who were able to sell mangoes, who were able to participate constructively in the supply chain, um, did experience uh, some positive. Uh, sorry, did experience some positive, uh, positive outlets, positive outcomes. For example, I'm trying to get that fourth one over here. There we go. For example. Uh, According to the, to the research that was done, a lot of these groups use the money to pay medical bills. Because you need money, you need cash to pay medical bills. You can't pay medical bills with chickens and with grain and stuff. You need, you need cash. And this was an injection of cash into their livelihoods that allowed them to pay for medicine and other services that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Equally as important and equally as interesting was that a lot of these villages started setting aside money collectively to form revolving loan funds. So that people could loan money from their own village. They didn't have to go to a bank. They set aside money that they had gained from the sale of mangoes to form revolving loan funds within their own villages that were used to start small businesses and provide for short-term lapses in financing. Also, another big uh, finding was that the money was used to pay for school fees and teacher salaries. A lot of a lot of villages or village communities have some sort of schooling function. Some of it is government funded. Most of it is, is pro bono and as such is a little bit lesser quality. So this allowed people to not only pay to have their kids sent to school, but also pay to have higher quality teachers or allow the teachers to um, be better resourced and better supplied to provide higher quality education to the kids. 
And the fourth key finding that we discovered was villages, both individuals and as groups, were saving money, setting it aside to, to increase their own farms. And in a number of occasions, we, we saw them uh, growing pineapples. And that was because the other product that the company we were working with, Africa Felix, was interested in purchasing was pineapples. They wanted mangoes, they wanted pineapples. The communities had seen the economic potential, had seen the possibility to increase their income, and increase the condition of their livelihood, or improve the condition of their livelihood. And they had calculated that they should form these own farms and, and move ahead with it. And it was, it was interesting because we learned that just about the time when we were talking amongst ourselves, you know, we should really next year convince them to try and save some money and then do this, you know, and it'd, it'd be great. What were they already doing? The same, the same thing that we had been coming up with in our own lives, which was again reaffirming of the research that we had done to say, you ask the people first what they think is the best idea, what they think can be done, what they think is the best way to move forward, and then assemble those, that sort of collective genius um, to make it work. So at those points, uh, just like to share that we, we formed 151 cooperatives. Um, we actually had to close the door <laughs> on uh, forming more cooperatives. There was more interest from the farmers than we anticipated. We had initially promised uh, to work with 50 groups. 150 ended up wanting to be involved in more. Um, due to logistical constraints with the fruit juice concentrate factory, only about 30% of those groups were able to participate in the first year. So that was a bit disheartening for us because we'll help staff on the ground and put in a tremendous amount of effort to make it, to make it happen, to make it work. The farmers were exceedingly interested, exceedingly uh, excited about the opportunity, but in the first year, there are birthing pains, not everything goes as planned, um, and we're excited to watch what happens this next season in April uh, and March. So, in total, the 30% of the groups who participated produced about 230 tons for the factory, which is about 40% of their total uh, mango income for the first year. So, actually, our farmers, according to that projection, could be able to provide the entire uh, demand that, for that company just by uh, working with, the, with those cooperatives. It's really exciting stuff. And of course, this is all contingent. You know, the whole theory of connecting rural farmers to the international market is, is contingent upon this company's ability to convert those raw mangoes into juice concentrate, which is then desirable to companies internationally and in West Africa and Europe. And we had we had some great news earlier this week that Africa Felix was able to sell two containers full of juice concentrate to a bottling company in Germany. So 35 tons of our farmers' mangoes are, are being shipped uh, to Germany later, I think next week sometime. Um, so, I think the long and the short of it is that we wanted to help the rural farmers in Sierra Leone. We'll hope wanted to help the rural farmers in Sierra Leone. And there were certain gifts, there were certain abilities that matched to make it work, in particular, Hogan's technical expertise uh, with Dr. Orson's background in USAID supply chain development, and World Hope's technical expertise in terms of community development, farmer relations, and operations that allowed this stuff to work. And ultimately, uh, everything that we did, we committed to God, and we believe he had blessed us uh, to carry out this work. And it's exciting to share these outcomes with you, to recognize that not everything was perfect, but that something has been set in motion which we anticipate will provide an increased uh, potential for uh, a much greater living condition for these people in Sierra Leone. It's a simple thing, but it's an important thing. Thanks very much for your time. We hope that some of these pictures, some of these comments have uh, stimulated questions that we can answer later on. But I think with that, close for now.